Let's just try and... We're live on Instagram, yes! <laughs> and we're now also live on Facebook, hooray! Hello everybody, welcome to the Theatre Cafe this afternoon and we are honoured to be joined by the absolutely lovely John Partridge. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, and just you, call I know, look at you all summary. And you, you all well. summary too. I know. Pete Treadwell. <laughs> not, not really, not really, not really. But I've got flip flops in the first game. Exactly, that's enough. Yes. So, uh, I want to know all about this solo show. So, you did this fantastic solo show down at the other palace. I can say it was absolutely cracking, absolutely fantastic show. Just to say that, because I'm so honest. Well, yeah. Um, no, it really <laughs> was. It was an absolutely stunning show. Just tell everyone a bit about it. So, my show was called Stripped, or is called Stripped, because I went on sale this morning at the Edinburgh Festival. Oh. Yes, assemblyrooms.com, tickets available. Yeah. <laughs> um, I call Stripped a reinvention of myself in many ways. Uh, life has a way of hardening you, uh, at least mine has, and this is my attempt at shedding those skins and embracing somebody I knew a long time ago. So through film and music, poetry, song, dance, I tell my story and in turn I ask the audience to consider theirs. So from boy to man, sexuality, sobriety, success, um, I deal with all those topics. Uh, it's been a real eye-opener for me. My sobriety has become very important to me, uh, and in some ways I don't like the word recovery, I call it my rediscovery of myself, because I guess for a long time um, I wasn't happy with myself, or at least I didn't feel comfortable with elements of my life. And over the course of the last eight months, or to be precise, 196 days, hey! 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 I. Uh, I've been able to reconnect with myself uh, and much of my life. Now, don't get me wrong, I've had an amazing time. You know, I, I have a beautiful husband, I have a family I couldn't be prouder of, friends, you know, I, I couldn't live without. I've had an amazing success uh, and I've achieved things I never thought possible, but I am so curious to know what I can achieve now and what is possible. So, I'm taking my show up to Edinburgh, and obviously, you know, my sobriety is ever-changing. And so the show that I did at the other palace, which I absolutely loved, it's an amazing venue that you have the opportunity it to go is. there. You must venue, go it? Yeah, and support cracking. everything there, because it really is, and it supports new theatre and new works, which is incredibly important. So please, if you have the opportunity to go to the other palace, please do. Um, Obviously, my show will be different in Edinburgh than it was uh, at the other palace because I seem to be this ever-evolving uh, thing right now. You know, <laughs> my, my life seems to be changing uh, rapidly, uh, and my feelings uh, about myself uh, and about lots of other people. So, um, yeah, always judging. <laughs> we'll get onto that a little bit later on. Judging. Uh, <laughs> Changes. So, um, you know, uh, I start my show in Edinburgh with an open chair. Uh, when you go to NA or AA or any of those sort of meetings, um, it will open with an open chair where a guest speaker comes and talks to you about their own experiences uh, and their life. And my show opens that way. So I invite anybody who is going to be at the Fringe between the 1st and the 27th to get in touch with me via social media or through my management, girlbets.com. And if you would be willing or you have something that you wish to share, um, you are more than welcome to come to my show and open it for me. So wow. I will have a different guest speaker every night. And it doesn't have to be about addiction. It can be just about what you've done with your day. It can be a philosophy. It can be a teaching. It can be something you just want to get off your chest, you know? <laughs> that has just really ticked you off. And you want to talk about it. Because we all, you know, no matter what we are, who we are, we all have public and private personas. We all have things that we want people to see and things that we don't want people to see. 
And sometimes that's very difficult. And it's very difficult for somebody like me, who tends to be very open, to uh, navigate that. And I make mistakes, you know, and I hold my hands up to that. And part of my sobriety and my sort of rediscovery is atoning for that. And so this is my way. I guess you could say I'm saying sorry to some people. Too. So, uh, but it's a happy affair as well. It's not all down. It's not all sad. It's not all like, oh my god, I've had a terrible time. You know, it, it, it's it, it, it's the colour of life. You know, I mean, it's, but it's very brave. You know, sort of showing everyone that in a theatrical way. And it, and when when you say solo show, people kind of think it's going to be like a cabaret. I can honestly say it's not that <laughs> at all. It's a it's an absolutely beautiful piece of theatre. And that's what it is, and it does take you on that roller coaster of one minute absolutely sobbing, and the next minute, you know, falling off your chair laughing. It's absolutely glorious. Because life is that way, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we can have incredible highs and crushing lows in the space of an hour. Yeah. That is what life is, and you know, I have sometimes painted a picture or tried to paint a picture of my life as something that it isn't, uh, and I'm very much aware of that. And. I very much now wish to step into this life. Uh, and also, this is part of my way of staying on the straight and narrow. Part of me being so vocal and so open about my struggles and my challenges, it's a little bit, I, I liken it to a marriage. When you get married, you stand up in front of your family and your friends and a room full of people and you declare love for somebody and you ask those people, their presence, to, to watch over you and to support you in that union with that person. And that's what I'm doing now. People that know me, people that have supported me and come and see my shows, or my family, or my friends, you know, I am asking them to, to watch over me in a way. And so this really is sort of you know, a union with myself. And um, I have to say, so far, I'm happy to marry it. Right. <laughs> Let's just talk about something else that you've done recently that was really you know, a very brave thing to do, um, seen by a lot of people, the Full Monty programme. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's all about exposing myself this year, isn't it? Yeah. I'm stripping, and all that was stripping on the television, I'm stripping in my one man show, I seem to be stripping at home, you can see it in the bottom of my garden, I'm a measure of occasion, oh, sweet. Yeah, right. um, I had uh, testicular cancer in 2004, and I chose to um, pretend it didn't happen. Uh, it was found randomly through uh, an operation on something else, and I didn't realise at the time, but obviously it had a huge impact on me. Obviously I make my money going out on the road, doing big tours, um, was anybody going to want to hire me for a 52 week tour in number one venues if they found out I had cancer? I don't know, rightly or wrongly, that was how I felt. Mm. And that was the choice I decided to make. But I think in sort of being silent uh, and not acknowledging it, everything finds a way of coming to the surface. You know, it just does. And it made me think about all sorts of things in my life. You know, my sexuality, my virility, my masculinity. Um, at the time, I was sort of on TV, winning awards for being sexiest male, and then I was thinking, but actually, I have this terrible scar and one testicle, and the other one doesn't look too clever either. And it just, you know, it, there was this real two sides of me. Yeah. You know, at, and when this program was, I was approached about doing this program, it was right at the beginning of me sort of asking myself a lot of these questions, and I'm so grateful that I was on the journey that I am on now, because had I not been, I would have said no and I wouldn't have addressed it, but because I was able to be brave. Because being brave doesn't mean you're not scared, you know, it means you just do it anyway. Yeah. You know, and had I not been on this path, I wouldn't have done it, and I am so grateful that this came to me because it allowed me to be with a group of men that I would not necessarily come in contact with. And this is really important about men's health. It, it, even gay men, you know, you think that gay men suddenly have, you know, can talk about anything and gossip, or, you know, we don't either. Gay men 
don't discuss their own health issues either. When you're straight, gay, it's, it's a man's thing. We kind of brush it under the carpet. I do think women are a lot more open about their health issues than men. And this was an amazing opportunity to be with a group of men and have this experience that I would never have had. And I am eternally grateful for it. And you, you know, check yourselves, yes. gentlemen, check. if you can. Or get somebody else to do it for you, yeah. even better. <laughs> don't have to do it yourself. Find a friend, you know, somebody random. You know, it, it, but please check yourselves because it saves lives and it can save your life. And something else important. We, this is the final important. Everything's all important today we're talking it's about. Very, very so, important. Uh, Make Dish Difference Trust yes. are doing this fantastic event on Sunday called West End Euro Does Does Eurovision? West End Eurovision? It's one of those things, and it sounds awesome. West End Eurovision. Yes, yeah, and you're a judge. <laughs> Always judging. Which one is like, what, what type of a judge are you gonna be? Are you gonna be like Simon Cowell or Louis Walsh or Impress me? Or that's what I'm going to say. Impress me. I'm going to throw shade. I'm going to be... No, I'm saying it seriously. It's an amazing event. Uh, I've been to this event uh, a few times before. I believe that this is the first time it's been back after an absence of yeah, about it's not been here four for a yeah, years. years. Yeah, Why? Yeah. An absence of four years. Why? But I believe that we have Kinky Boots, Hamilton, oh. Dream Girls. Mamma Mia, Aladdin, and Young Frankenstein. So if you haven't got your tickets, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, shame on you for not supporting this wonderful event. Because if you don't buy your tickets, these events won't happen. And that's why we need your support. We really need your support. And also, if you've seen those shows, you know how exceptional those performers are and how exceptional the talent is in London's West End. So please, I urge you, support Mad Trust support this event because it's really, really important. That really is important. And you can also vote. So if you go to um, the Make a Difference Trust website, Correct. you can have a look at all of the different idents that the shows have done Correct. and vote on your favourite. So do, but not quite yet, because we've got a few more questions which have been sent in. So don't go there yet. Keep stay clean. stay there, Keep stay there. Clean. We'll try, I'll try. Well, this is a good one. Oh, no. Are you, well, these have been sent in by fans, by the way. So um, are you going into the rink Am I going into the ring? I think that means the, at, at Southwark Playhouse. Well, Are you in it? Am I in it? Are you in the show? No, I'm not in the show, <laughs> but, I'm go, but I will be going to see it. Yeah. Um, everybody knows I love the roller skate or two. Uh, but The Ring was the first musical I ever saw. Was it? In London's West End, yeah. Ah. It was the first show I ever saw, and I think Carolyn Conn is an absolute sensation. I uh, also, um, I've worked with Fabian and Eloise before, uh, and I really love the Southern Playhouse. Once again, yeah. I think that's another extraordinary venue that produces venue. extraordinary work, to be fair, on a shoestring. So, support Southern Playhouse yes. too, at the rink. Yes, okay. Is there a part you'd like to play that's currently in the West End? No, there is no part that I would currently like to play in the West End, but there is, uh, I'm writing my own musical. Ooh, um, oh, yeah, I'm not oh, going to be exclusive? in it. It is an exclusive, oh. actually. Yeah, I'm not, well, I've already written the script, and we're halfway through the score, and I'm hoping to take it to, uh, to workshop it in September, and then hopefully to play in the north of England. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, it's called Northern Boy, Northern Soul, and it's based on the Northern Soul scene yeah. uh, from 1972 to 77, um, set in Wigan. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, and from it's, Wigan. Uh, it's actually from Wigan. Well, yeah, there we go. Uh, and, and for people that don't know anything about Northern Soul, uh, it is an amazing genre of music. You get all those songs, you know, by Dusty Springfield, The Supremes, uh, Motown, um, and it will be a coming of age story. Uh, I'm very, very proud of it. It's something that I've been working on for quite a while. So Northern Boy, Northern Ooh, Soul. Oh, how exciting! How exciting! And um, that's the exclusive. But other than that, as far as musicals are concerned, uh, there's only one show that I'd really like to do, and I'm currently trying to pitch for that as well, is The Boy From Oz. <gasps> yes, I yeah, love that. Can I'm, you get Hugh Jackman over? Yeah. Just so that I can meet him. That's exactly know. that. So <laughs> I, I mind. But it's really, you know, I, I've done all sorts of things to get the rights of the show. It's a great I've turned show. up outside the door, dressed as the costume. I've really done it. I'm not even joking. You think I'm joking? Really? Yeah, I have done it all. But I would love, I would love to do that show. Yeah. Yeah, that's, great, a, that's great. my. Um, 
that's my definitely my bucket list. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Okay, you're such an inspir. I think that's meant to be an inspiration. Oh. Inspiring, I don't know. Let's say yeah. you're an inspiration. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. As we know from your songs and strips, if you ever found time, would you like to write a book? Mm. Now there's a good question. Now there's another good question. <laughs> uh, I'm in the process of doing my book. Yeah, uh, it's where I've just come from right now. Um, uh, I will have the book out later in the year. Um, it is not an autobiography. Uh, it is kind of, um, it will be linked, it's linked with where I am right now in my life. Uh, and my so I guess you could call it, it, I have no answers to, um, to what worked for me. But I know what I did in order to feel better. Uh, and that's just by taking it one day at a time. And it's just for today. So it's what I did in order to stay well, in order to be well. And so I guess you'd call it a little guide in a way, or a little sort of lifestyle, self-help um, in staying well. Which brings me on to another thing, hashtag just for today. Um, I'm releasing my podcast series next month, ah. which is called Just For Today. Um, which will just be me whispering on with, uh, <laughs> with various people who who share this part with me. Yeah. Uh, and there'll be song, and there'll be poems, uh, and there'll be chat. Uh, so that starts next month, uh, end of the month. Uh, hashtag just for today. Sounds fab. <laughs> okay. If you and your husband, so. John's husband, John, is currently in the, the touring production of Hairspray. Hairspray! Hairspray. 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 Everybody loves Connie Collins! <laughs> the only fun, unfortunate thing about that is, is that I now am called Mrs. Collins. <laughs> no. I quite like it. Yeah, no. It's Mrs. Collins. Miss right. Collins. Doesn't anyway, Mrs. Name. Collins. Thank you. Um, <laughs> if you could be in any musical together, what would it be and which parts would you play? I would love to work with John again. We worked, we did a chorus line together, and it was so funny when we got that show. People were like, "Oh, how's that going to be like working together?" We were like, uh, "Get a better marriage." <laughs> you know, people <laughs> say, "Oh, you live together, you work together. It's like terrible." We love it. Yeah. We hate being apart. I know people are like throwing up right now. <laughs> this we've been to, we've been together 15 years, married for eight. He is my life and my love, and you know, I would work with John at any time. So we obviously we did a course line together uh, and that was absolutely wonderful. If we could do anything else together, I don't know. I'm not sure what that would be. Um, I'm trying to work in mean, I do a uh, Christmas season, I'm doing a, I always do Panto every year, don't I love a bit, but I love a bit of pantomime. So I keep trying to get him to come and uh, do Panto with me, but he's, he watches Panto and he goes, I don't get it. <laughs> he's Canadian, my husband's Canadian, yeah. sorry. And he kind of looks at me, he's like, is this funny? <laughs> is this supposed to be funny? I'm like, um, kind of funny. But, so I keep trying to write for him to come, so, uh, I'm at Plymouth this year, just saying that. Oh, uh, but so amazing. Uh, yeah. Lovely little love. Oh, I absolutely yeah. love. Lovely little Yeah, just yeah, love this great. So um, maybe I'll try and open them this year. Maybe yeah. I'll be going to come and be Christmas maybe, in uh, Devon. The, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Cold though, I'm thinking. Uh, no, it's not, it's not too cold. It's no. just a lot of rain. I'm from, not, I'm from there. Uh, yeah, I'm not from Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah, anyway, no one needs to know that. Uh, right, last question. Are there any plans for another album? <laughs> there are plans for another album. God, my goodness. Is, yeah. you, is there anything you haven't got plans for? Well, there are plans for another album. Take uh, over the world. I will be doing uh, a recording of Stripped. Um, Stripped will become um, a record uh, as I am also writing new material, so original material for the show um, for Stripped. Um, so yes, there will be a record, yeah. And hopefully that will be... I'll say in the summer. Fantastic. Yeah, well, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. People, buy your tickets to Strict Edinburgh between the 1st and the 27th <laughs> of the August assembly. assembly checkpoint. Yeah, and also get your tickets for West End Eurovision on Sunday. Thank you for coming in. It's been an West absolute End. joy.